Hey guys, I'm Mike. I'm an author and an illustrator. And today I want to talk about working outside of your comfort zone and just some things that I've learned doing commissions for the last year or so and working as an illustrator. Uh, so I just want to talk through that stuff while I make this proof of concept. The, the, the little painting that I'm going to be working on here is a bit of Americana. I've uh, the, the, the request that I got was from a guy who's bought a lot of art from me and he trusts me and I trust him and he's asked me to do something that I don't do or that I haven't done which is like really I don't know if it needs to be an oil painting or a really smooth piece of gouache but that's just that's the opposite of my style my style is very frenetic and saturated and uh, sort of illusion of detail-y and it's not necessarily smooth and polished um, so I have a customer who has asked me to bring this Tom Wolf quote to life as a young uh, black boy uh, on a baseball field. And the quote is this, man's youth is a wonderful thing. It's so full of anguish and of magic, and he never comes to know it as it is until it's gone from him forever. And that's a very powerful quote. And Tom Wolf was a genius. And I, first time I was exposed to him was his work on uh, with... Ken Kesey and the Merry Pranksters, the, the Electric Kool-Aid book, and I've read most of his novels, and I love him. And I'm actually surprised, knowing that this gentleman that made this commission, that he would pick a Tom Wolfe quote. But, um, you know, the, the way that I'm going to bring that to life is I see a, a little boy in the outfielder who's hyper-competitive, who's gritting his teeth, who wants to make the best play that he can, who must win. And in that way, he's sort of losing his, his youth. I only have... 12 by 9 inches it needs to be small because mad it's going to be 12 by 16 and when I'm when I said earlier uh, about working outside your comfort zone medium is one of those things uh, too many people just consider them like I like I'm I'm just an artist like I don't I'm not an oil painter I'm not a watercolorist although that's probably what I'm most known for like watercolor and gouache but you know I use a little I try and use a little bit of everything so and and hopefully, I mean, I think that you should too. All right, I'm gonna take a big silhouette brush, just a big marker, and try and come up with some kind of composition. I think that we're gonna have a figure, like a figure on one side. Like, what if we? Hmm. Like, if we had the quote over here, it's a long quote, and. One one of the things when I was talking with the uh, the customer about I don't I hate the word client I don't want to use the word client I call him a customer he's a guy he's a good guy uh, the human being who is purchasing this art from me is that we we both love the big baggy pants of that era so this isn't a ton of real estate to get the to get the boys the boys pants in there and I just have never really done sort of a, a Rockwellian oil painted thing and usually those paintings are so big and you get a big flat brush I mean I can I, I looked at some of them you know some high rate that's something you can do if you're not familiar with a, a particular style the Met Archive is amazing go to the Met Archive and find whatever period of art history it is and look at one of those huge resolution photos and zoom in there and figure out like are they scrumming it in there with their hands or is it a big, you know, a big bristly, you know, uh, so with oil paint, you can put it on the canvas so many different ways. And it's usually like a hog's hair brush that becomes very, you know, you see the lines in there. You know, it, the, the oil ends up looking like uh, gesso or something. Is it gesso or is it gesso? I think that's the first like weird G word. Now we have gif and jif. I don't know. I think, although gesso should be made with like, glue and animal parts but it's not it's just acrylic i think for those of you not familiar with uh, traditional art it's the stuff you put on a canvas before an oil painting so let's just say the boy is here if the boy is here his hips are going to be back so imagine that his you know his his torso which is already going to be a little bit shorter than a man's is really going to be short because you know, it's going to be receding into the distance. And then his hips, which would be 
you know, like this, are going to be even more pointed. Although they're, whoa, that's not what I wanted. Try and move this thing. Now, the hips of boys do not work like men's. They are uh, much more flexible. So if, a, if, a, if, you, if you look at a boy in an outfield, his legs will actually look a little bit more bowed out and skinny than a man's. And uh, his knee is turned that way. So let me get those lines like that. Just see just a touch of that. And then his shoe is going to be like that. There's cleats, I should say. And since he is bent forward, it's going to seem like he has more traps than he normally would. Doesn't really have any traps, but oops. The trapezius muscle. You get a big baggy baseball uniform. Let's go like that. Some kind of flesh tone. Just got a little. So, we talk about pose and posture. He's probably going to be like this. Maybe the glove will be over. It's going to be one of those old-timey gloves with the fingers, I'm sure. Uniform. That's kind of an action pose as if he's on the move. Maybe he's going to be looking. Ooh, that's a good, that's a good idea. Here we go. Light bulb. What if? Whoa. I'm also using a brush that's like 300 pixels. <laughs> Don't do that. So what if he's looking up like this? I know he's going to have a red hat. Because it's going to be red and crimson because that's... And that bill is actually going to be up like that. We can see the underside. Right. So this is his hat. It's like that. We'll draw it. You know, I have a. Some type of super intense expression, right? And of course, we'll give him cleats and the, the, so, you know, the, the sock things like that. Red and white uniform. He's gonna, you know, he's going to have a stripe like this. Uniform is going to be pinstriped and white colored. The uniform is going to come down like this. This obviously does not look very old timey by any stretch. We we'll give him like a red turtleneck, probably, and then red sleeves. Come on, really had a lot. Of, I feel like you see a lot of layers. 
and then for the pants, probably be some type of super desaturated orangey yellow. The real tough part of this thing is going to be, you know, once I get the OK, is going to be uh, the style of it. And there's so, and it's funny because I, I really pride myself on being able to pull off a lot of different styles, like, without issue. I could do this really graphic, really angular, you know, super digitized, or I could do it as a pen and ink drawing. These are things that, you know, I'm kind of, I don't want to say an expert, but that I'm very familiar with ink drawings, my own mixed media style, all kinds of things, but like a smooth oil painting. I mean, I know how to do it. I can go get the turpentine out of the garage, but God, I hate oil paint. I think that's what this has to be, right? All right. So, I put some white pixels in there. And I'm just going to delete those real fast. Which means when I paint under this, God knows what will happen. Um, but I can fix that real fast. So... The idea behind that quote, loss of innocence and youth, right? And, you know, this guy, the guy that I'm doing this for is sort of, and the reason why I think this is going to play well with him is that he's involved with athletics professionally. Therefore, um, he's going to understand, like, that you need to have fun when you compete. So I, think, so the, I guess my point there is just get to know the people you're, you're doing work for as much as you can. If you only work on, if you, you know, if you don't attend live art fairs or, or, you, you know, if, if you live in a really small town, say, you know, my, I mean, I don't live in a big city, but I live in a, a decent sized college town. And, uh, anyways, I, th I think that this will, I think the concept of it will work, but now we have to turn it into a painting. So. And I can make this figure. I think he wants the cleats on there too. And I'm going to write on this thing when I send it to him. Like I'm going to, you know, make it clear for people like this is just a digital layout. It took 20 minutes or. Well, I mean, I'm talking to you, so it would have taken 20 minutes. First thing we need is some grass, right? Uh, let's get a paintbrush. I guess that makes sense. The camera can be on his knees. So we know somewhere back here there's going to be a fence. And the 
sun is going to be somewhere. I'm going to cast his shadow in some direction. So let's just say the sun is over here. These are not important details here right now, but I'm trying to build what this is supposed to be. Now, I don't know if he is a city guy or a country guy. In the 40s and 50s, they definitely would have had like big light poles, right? So that's what I remember, like this. I thought I deleted that big white spot. I didn't. Nope. I mean, because if this is a, a 12 year old, he's probably going to be closer to the fence, right? He's going to be making a play. Maybe not. Well, they wouldn't have had a warning track. He's going to be more like this. Okay. And then in the background, we got kind of oranges here. So we want to do maybe just blue toned buildings in the distance. I don't know. My little league field as a kid, it was a see-through fence, like a chain link fence. And you could see the cars there. And every time a, hit, a kid hit a home run, a car would get hit, which is just a dumb, like who would park in that front row? It's not like people were hitting them three rows back, you know? Be simple lights, like three simple lights in the little league field. What if we just do? Go back and fix those stupid pixels. I have a font here. I think. So give me a good excuse to keep that as like a simple blue sky. But I feel like it's too sparse down here. Probably just make that blue sky.
That's an inside joke. We're trying to disguise on a skin tone. He's a basketball guy. I'm a basketball guy. We decided on John Stark's tone skin. Okay, so it's like like he's just started moving on the ball. I don't know how he wants the font to look. Probably have my wife write it in or something. I could see this being old timey. Rickety park fence. It's park league. Not sure what I wanted to talk about while I was doing this. I think I got off track. Oh, getting out of your comfort zone. I mean, I obviously didn't try and execute anything stylistically. We're just roughing something out to see if... You know, this is always a good idea. If someone's commissioning you for a painting, to just, like, show them the elements in place. And they may be like, I hate that. As long as you under you have to explain that, like, it's not going to look like this. This isn't a style thing. This is just a quick digital mock-up. That's not John Stark's skin. That's not John Stark's skin either. You know, skin tone is a strange thing because white people are really orange and black people are really more orange-red usually. Not always. Just trying to add in a few details here. Underside of the bill, the brim, a little bit of hair. Worked. 
super important consideration when you're doing stuff like this is like, can I paint this with the appropriate, can I paint a, a facial expression at this, at this size, like knowing that it's nine by 12. It's one of the great advantages of digital art. It's like, I can just up the resolution and put as much detail. I mean, well, I guess that's one of the, you can become a victim of that too with digital art where you up the resolution to so much you're painting in all these little pixels that nobody is ever going to see. I used to do that all the time, comic book coloring, like trying to get all the lines absolutely perfect. It's like, no one's ever going to see that. What are you doing? Oops. Actually, the shirt needs to be overly baggy too. It's part of what will make this thing more... Uh, believable like a yeah just something to make it look kind of like wood make the density way lower go lighter although even though this is a tiny brush, it's still huge, which is weird. Let's make it red. What this what do you look like? If the sun is over there. Hmm. So this thing's probably arced. If that's center field, hmm, I'll have to think about that for a second. Body the quote. And then what we can do is just find something to make it look a little old timey. And it certainly isn't going to make it look like an oil painting, but. We could at least give it some kind of nostalgic texture to it. I don't know if nostalgic is the right word, but See how much that gives it just like it just it gives the illusion that I spent way more time on it than I did. If you just send them the the regular old thing, it won't look it's not as uh it's not as good. And one little step like that makes a huge difference. And then it makes the light look like light and 
there appear to be some dark spots in the grass. And you saw what I did. It was just a bunch of scrumming and, like, you know, took a few minutes. But, yeah. All right. I think we touched on some, some interesting things. I will, uh... I will probably end up doing a, a full-size, like, oil-style um, version. And if I do, I will... I will put it on on YouTube. So thanks for listening to me, Yammer. I hope uh, there was some valuable information in there. And get out there and, and, and accept work that isn't what you do every day. You know, I draw... The I, the thing I do most of is I, is I paint dogs. And when I'm not writing or... You know, I do portraits, I guess. I'm a portrait artist. And I try and do as many things that aren't that. I mean, I've done, you know, dozens or hundreds or however many of them that I've done. And I don't need, like, I don't need practice doing that anymore. Yes, you can always get a little bit better. But what I need to get better at is, you know, stuff like this. Stuff I have no, it'll make you better at everything else. So, anyways, uh, thanks for listening. If you're interested, check out my website and all my stuff below. Uh, I post little scribbles and stuff on Instagram every day. So, uh, thanks, guys.